Nine out of 10 of my students I was coaching this week all sliced the golf ball. Basically, they were coming over the top of the golf ball here, face was wide open, you were, and they were getting that horrible slice that loses distance, loses direction. It's so frustrating, isn't it? So what I did, and I thought it'd be really helpful for you today, is with each one of them, we managed to cure their slice in different ways, okay? So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you five simple ways that you can start to use. You might use them all, you might use a combination of them to improve your slice. So one of, my, one of my first students, uh, George, basically he was slicing it because of his grip. His actual lead hand on the golf club was way too weak. And what I mean by that is, is he was holding it too much in the palm. If you hold the club when you grip it here, too much in the palm, you, you're almost in a situation where you're gonna slice it from there, okay? So you can see from this angle, when it's in the palm, I, when I look down here, I can't see many knuckles on my hand, all right? What I want you to do, okay, and just check this for yourself, you want the club to sit much, much more into the fingers of the hand here. So now when I close the hand, it sits, look, this butt end here, on my butt of my hand, it sits on top of the grip. Now when I look down, I can see, look, one, two, and three knuckles. This now is in a, what we call a strong position, and is in a position that's gonna help me close the club face through the impact area. With George, he found that very, very difficult with this club high in the palm, but once he got it into the fingers of this lead hand here, it was so much easier for him naturally, by the way, naturally to close that club face and reduce his slice to a much, much straighter shot. Now, George's bottom hand was absolutely fine. We didn't have to change that, but do check that as well. A lot of people like slice have this top hand way too far over and this trail arm underneath here. Make sure this, this arm here is nice and soft here, turned inwards, so it almost feels like it's underneath. This is gonna help you create the release of the club. If you're here, if anything, you're gonna create this type of motion. So underneath, okay, so point number one, make sure you've got a decent grip before you start to work on anything else. Beautiful. Number Two. Number two is a biggie, and this was the situation for Toby. Toby, massive slice of the golf ball, but his slice came from setup. So his grip was absolutely fine, but the problem with him is his shoulder line was way over here. Now I see this a lot with drivers, so check this out. When your ball position is way forward, what we tend to do is we tend to move towards it and reach for it. That gets us aiming over here, and from there you're gonna have one option. You're gonna come across the line of the golf ball, either hit it miles left or with an open face, hit this big slice. So how we got Toby setting up much more square, so it's, the shoulder line was more in line with the foot, feet, all we did was get him to hold the club in his lead hand, grip was fine, remember, got him to put his trail hand behind his leg here and slide it down to the knee. What this does is it draws the shoulder back here, it lets the right shoulder, my trail shoulder, drop a little bit here and helps me go almost feels like it's underneath as opposed to where Toby was on top. Wonderful, if you're underneath, you're in a position to hit down the line and through the shot for those much straighter shots. If you're over, up here, you're in the position to hit down and across, which creates those horrible slices, okay? So simply, we slid down the leg here, got him into position here. It said, he said, that feels like I'm over here, Danny. But we put him on camera, it didn't, okay? So real simple routine, get your, uh, your lead hand in place, slide it down the bottom of your leg, move it in position. We're in a great place now, look, to work the club on an arc that's gonna come on the inside of this golf ball here and hit through that shot. Build that into routine and that will help you massively hit through and hit that beautiful draw. But this is number three. Toby didn't hit that beautiful draw when we gave him this straight away. And the reason being is Toby needed to work on his release. Because of this motion, he trained a very, very poor torso release through the impact area. So we needed to now work on number three. We got him into a place where he could hit the draw, okay? Now we need to train him to close that face. So his path was better, we need to get him closing the face. Here's what we did. I got him to grab his driver and turn it around and grip the shaft end just for a second, because I needed him to create the feeling of some snap. You see, when you slice a golf ball, most of the time what's happening is, is you don't have any snap at the golf ball. Your shoulders are doing all the work and this creates this choppy, slicey action. You need to create 
almost this natural kind of snap where if you look at my lead arm and club shaft here, they're all lining up at impact. So we're creating, look here, we're loading the shaft, we're snapping the shaft. So you can do this in the garden, just get a feel of snap, very different to this. Yeah, where this torso is doing all the work. We want to create snap. Notice as we're creating this snap, the path is coming where? Perfectly down the line. If I did this, I come straight over the top and I'm in my slice, okay? So I got him feeling that snap. So we're in position here. We've got the setup correct. Now we need to feel this club here all lining up. So that club face, toe and heel all line up at impact in a snap fashion rather than a drag fashion. And that was it. Now, did he get it straight away? Of course he didn't, okay? It was not easy actually initially to get that sensation um, of snap. What he kept doing is, is he was getting a bit of snap, but he kept turning. So he had to get that sensation almost like this lead shoulder here stayed back a little bit as he was snapping this club. But once he did, the difference in the actual shot was really, really amazing. Look at that, straight down that right hand side with a beautiful draw. That is point number three. Get your setup in position here, then create more snap so your club face naturally releases through the impact area. You get the toe turning over and it gets rid of that slice. Right, so number four. So sometimes when the basic stuff doesn't work, you've got to look into what's your pattern in your goal swing. Now, Paul, one of the other students this week, had some loops. This is really normal. So most slicers have a loop in their swing. They tend to loop it around here like this and then loop it over. So they create these shapes like this. When you've got this kind of figure of eight shape, this is going to create slices. Now it may not be as exaggerated as that, but most people have it. Shallow, steep, and across. All I did with Paul to kind of really improve the simplicity of this swing, so it was much more up and down. If you get it up and down, it's a lot easier to repeat was educate him into the feeling of the takeaway, how it should move in the first kind of few feet of the swing. And all we did was this. Paul was simply rolling his wrist and rolling his forearms excessively. Now what you wanna do is you've gotta realize that the, the wrists and the forearms work more in a upward motion as opposed to a rolling motion. So once you get this feeling, I certainly give this feeling to Paul, the wrist work and the arms work up, watch this now. If you just simply turn your shoulders, the club's perfect in line. It isn't rolled in, okay? If I roll my wrists like this, then turn my shoulders, that's where the start of the loop's gonna come from. So once you educate yourself into this kind of, okay, there's my wrist, there's my uh, arms working more upwards at a slight, slight angle, get that sensation, then all you do look is you blend this whole thing into a backswing. When you've got uh, the club working up, it can work much more straight down and then through the shot. So start with that, check. If you've got loops in your swing, check your takeaway. If you're finding yourself kind of rolling in here, start to get that club working and build this into a simple routine where maybe your first move initially is to feel this kind of upward motion. Just there you go, up a little bit here with the arms and then just get the sensation that your arms look are working up on that way back. So start with that first. You don't want to have the roll, you want to feel the club working more this way, add a rotation into that, and then away you go. So let's blend those motions in, and let's see how we get on before we move on to step five. Nice and straight, down the middle of that fairway. So before we get into number five, which is a real belter by the way, if you are loving this type of content, consider subscribing to the channel. I release videos like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. So come and join that community. Also, if you join the video, remember to smash that like button. So number five, okay. Now, number four was really helped Paul get a much more direct line to the golf ball, but it didn't completely get rid of his slice. Remember, if you are used to these loops, which is so normal without you realizing, okay, just because you get that club much more on line on the way back, doesn't mean you've forgotten the loop on the way down. So this final point, again, is just a beautiful feeling. What I want you to do, once you've got the sense now of this club working much more up, not rolling around, I want you to get a sense now here, when you come down, just simply get the, the club working, and almost just for a second as a feeling, just drop it to the ground where your trail foot is here. Because if you slice, you don't do this. You go this way, yeah? So once you've got it here, you've got to get a sensation of from here and then from there, just get a feeling of doing this. Up. So you're gonna swing the club up, 
move it, drop it here for a second, and move it up. So this is gonna go from a low position to a high position. If you slice it, you are almost certainly doing this. You know that you're coming over, so you're going from a high position and you're coming down into a low position, all right? So feeling this simple pattern of high up here, low down here, and high. And then all you're doing is you're gonna gra gradually look, blend all this in to a much, much more, look at this, I'm coming here, I can now look, hit through this way, okay? So you just build and start to blend these feelings in. Once you get the idea of this, it all starts to become easier. So with some practice, Paul started to get a much, much more direct line up, a more direct line uh, down. Now we didn't completely eliminate a slice in this half hour session, but what we did do is we turned that horrible slice into a, just a controllable fade that was now hitting fairways. I know that with some practice and this sensation of, uh, of simplicity, Paul will start to hit them much, much straight and maybe even turn that into a draw if he wanted to too. So here's how I want you to work on it. Just grab your shot here and start to develop the sensations. All we're gonna do here is really get that sensation of the club working up. Just imagine it's gonna to go to a low position and then merge it, it's going to a high position. So almost here, look, the arms are working, look, away from the body on the way through, as opposed to towards the body on the way through. So up, down, and up again. So really feel that upwards motion. Take your time with it, build it into a nice rhythm, and then start enjoying the motion. Beautiful little draw. So I've got some more detailed, if you want to know more detail on this particular subject, check this video out right here. But I hope you enjoy this little series. Have a great golfing week. I'll see you very, very soon.